Okay, cool. It's Van Styles, Big Dookie Chain. To my left is Tash, and to my right is Static Selecta. What's up, man? Good to see you. Too, man. Thanks for coming, man. Appreciate you. As I was telling you earlier, probably the most inspiring uh, music. Music, music, what are we saying? Musician from Boston in terms of like what you've done lot. with your career? Yeah, I mean, we got a lot now. I'm proud of, you know, dudes like Millie's and, um, you know. Uh, yeah, Millie's is blowing up right now. Joiner and, you know, Term and everybody. There's, there's so many. We were just talking about Zarface. Like, the way they reinvented themselves is crazy. But I appreciate that from a producer, DJ standpoint. Yeah, exactly. And there are not too many DJs that have produced as much as you. Yeah. Like, your catalog is intense. I don't know what I said. Do you have like a standout track or album that you put out that you are most proud of? Yeah, you get those good It's tough. I know. I know. Especially I have a lot. number of artists I mean, you work with. Be, you know, being on Lost Tapes 2 with Nas and being like on the track list with Kanye and Alchemist and all these people, like that was a big one for me. But um, I think this album that I'm about to drop with 2 Chains is like my my ultimate, like I'm really, really, it, it's been almost 10 years in the making and we're going like all the way with this one. It's well, like I heard you special. describe it as his reasonable doubt. Yeah, but it's so much like bigger than than reasonable doubt as far as the, uh, like the, the the sonics are just so different. Like there's, there's songs on this album that don't sound like anything you've ever heard in your life. Really? Yeah, and it's still all me. It's still like, there's even a drill beat on there I did that I've never even done a drill beat before, but it's still like boom bap. It's crazy. Nice. So would you so would you say that some of the work on this is the best you've ever done? Yeah. It's like I had to only have one album that people heard. I think this one is uh, it's it. And you guys are waiting for Call you, Welcome to Collie Grove 2 to come out? Nah, that came out. That, came that out. did come out? Yeah. The second one came out? No, nah, this is next. It's I didn't like, realize that. I'm about to drop. So, when it, so is this dropping? You're on Rock Nation, right? Nah, not no more. I was managed by them for about five years. It's okay. all love. Uh, my manager left there too. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm still down. You know, Mass Appeal and yeah, Shady. All that. So, what is this dropping on then? Is this independent? Can't say yet. Can't so say you, yet. Caught, you caught me on a date where okay. we, have, we haven't announced it yet. Because I'm not gonna lie, we have like ten options. Yeah. Okay. But I'm, I'm letting Change and his management handle that. But uh, we'll be announcing it very shortly. So, okay. No, it's not. But we just we're already jumping to like what you're doing now. Like yeah. I want to, I'm like a hip hop historian over here. So I want to talk about like talk about dope ass albums. The first time I can really remember hearing you like in your local Boston like legend, your local scene, hearing you around there. But first time really popping off was the Nas tapes, yeah. the Legacy tape. How did that happen? How did you meet? Like how did Nas? Did he hear that? How did like? So the first one I did was kind of unofficial, even though Nas did host it. I caught him at a, a radio at NYU in New York, and he did like drops for me and all that. Okay. Shout out to DJ Skids Who had him on the show And I like caught Nas At the right time Got the drops I took it And I put together This mixtape Called The Prophecy yep. And the next time I saw Nas Happened to be at D&D With Primo okay. And Nas was like I love that tape So when it was time For Hip Hop Is Dead to come out Did he know You manager, were going to Like make a tape Out of that No I had already done it He loved done it. it Okay. So when we did The Prophecy 2 That was official With Def Jam His manager Who later on Managed me Which is funny um, it's, just, it's bugged out He called me and he was like um, Mike Brinkley he called me and he was like you know Nas wants you to do his official tape and Def Jam printed 80,000 CDs and gave them all out so that was like an official Def Jam release Like I, I remember getting that it was like a big deal getting that not only one because you were like from Boston like that area like repping Nas but like being a fan of the hip, hip hop too like what is that moment like when you get the official like that from Nas yeah, like, and then later on like when I signed when, when Mass Appeal which is Nas company I was signed to Rock at the same time and I'm on Shade 45 so Technically, I was signed with Jay, Nas, and M at the same time. That's kind of bugged out. That's kind of bugged out. That is that is crazy, man. That, like that's how you know that like you one your skill sets top of the line, and two your worth ethics top of the line. Yeah, man, it's hard to earn, man. There's a lot of uh, I'm in a good place right now because now I don't feel like there's um obviously there's new heights to things. Like I just had a record go triple platinum. Like that's shit like that's amazing. Shout out to Joey Badass. But what record was that? Uh, Love is only a feeling. Okay. But, um, huh? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Show me just went gold. Like Detroit versus everybody's about to be platinum. Like the plaques are coming in. But besides all that, now it's like I'm in a place where I can just do whatever I want, and I don't feel like there's any kind of um, like I've already done so much shit that like I, now it's like I'm. Com I don't want to use the word comfortable because I'm comfort. That's not a good feeling. Like you want to always be, you know, hungry for shit. But it's like now I feel like there's no. Uh, 
like I don't have expectations for myself anymore. Now it's like I want to just do what I love, and I don't. I say no to things all the time. I don't do shit because I have to. Like it's a good feeling. You, know? you said yes to the big Dookie Chain interview. Thank well, you. God bless but, you. But that's crazy. I fucking you. hate podcasts, but I'm doing I, this. I, I, I appreciate this, man. And that, that's crazy to me to even hear that because when I look back at your discography, like even from your straight up from the jump, you always got like MOP, fucking uh, Styles P, Jada Kiss, Saigon, like that 24 mixtape you did with Saigon. Like you've been album, doing album, 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 album. My bad. You've been doing that shit like from the jump. So it seems to me like you've been doing shit that you loved from the jump. Oh, absolutely. The but I also did a lot of records with certain, you know, artists you probably never even heard of that I didn't want to do, but I had to because of, you know, oh, financial, re uh, you know, responsibilities or whatever. Now I'm just in a place where like, I, if it doesn't feel right, I'm not doing it. Speaking of all these artists that you've worked with, talk about what happened when DJ Drama got arrested because you went from Changed being my like, whole life. You were the and I'm dropping. King. Check this out. You want an exclusive? Yes. November first. Still praying. West Side Gun, DJ Drama, and Static Selector, Gangsta Grills. That's fire. Yeah, awesome. November first. Yeah. yeah that is super so cool. when you, it's funny you mention that because this is bringing me back to. I haven't done a mixtape in so long. Yeah. And uh, it's bringing me back to that. Like, um, you know, I've known Drama since way before all that. But when he got arrested, I remember I called Clinton Sparks and I was like, "Yo, what are you gonna do a mix unit?" And he goes, "I don't know what that is." He, he thought the fuck. His phone might have been tapped, but he thought like the feds were listening because well, it, it was, the it was that, that crazy. Oh, it was and crazy Cannon too. Am I right? It's so crazy, man. Because now mix units like a bootlegger. They like bootleg people's albums and shit. Clinton got nothing to do with it anymore. But it's just bugged out how like they just like got away with that, and now they just bootleg every album that comes out. Like yeah. I, one time, I ordered my bootleg album off their site and got it in the mail. Like, what the fuck is this? Right, right, right. And now they're bootlegging. Mike, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sign of respect. So nah, that ain't respect, bro. They're literally bootlegging people's albums and selling them. Nah, I'm just fucking. That's just, that shit is whack. It's like running. It's like MOPs to walk around with baseball bats yeah. and beat. You saw back in New York back in the day. Yeah, I'm sure they moved off this. <laughs> You're someone that puts like crazy people on tracks together like you wouldn't even expect. Yeah. One of my favorites, 21 and over. Sean Price, Mac Miller. The video's dope. You guys must be on tour in that video or something like that. We were at a festival in Minneapolis. Festival on tour. You got any stories from like that session with Mac Miller and Sean P, like making that? Like, yeah, Unfortunately, man, they didn't do the song together. Um, Sean did it at my crib for his album. I think it was for like uh, Mike Tyson or something. And he never finished the song. Okay. And when I started Extended Play, I asked Sean, I was like, yo, who do you want to do a song with? And he's like, Mac Miller. I was like, that's interesting. Yo. So I seen Mac at South By and I told him and I I played him the song. I was like, yo, I'm going to use this for my album. And Max, like, dude, he's like, he dropped everything and he went to the studio and did it. And he literally just turned 21 like a couple days before. Okay. I saw somewhere that you kind of like discovered Mac Miller. How much is truth is that? Not discovered, but w what happened was Wiz Khalifa wanted beats for me like way back. And Artie from Rostrum was like, he brought dude, uh, shout out to Boaz from Pittsburgh. He's like an OG out there. And the dude bought some beats off me. Okay. So I'm like, if Wiz wants beats, tell him to pull up and buy some beats. And Artie's like, Wiz ain't gonna do that, bro. If you want, like Wiz is on Atlantic, uh, not in Atlantic, he was on some Warner or whatever. He's like, if you wanna work with Wiz, you gotta like just send him the beats or whatever. And I fronted on Wiz. Like I, I told Wiz in person, like his first single, I, I wasn't feeling it. So I just didn't care. And then Wiz put all cushion orange juice and I was like, this shit's dope. And I I was like, yo, you still want beats? And he's like, I'm good. So I played myself with Wiz Khalifa, even though I was staying true to my, you know, yeah, what I yeah, thought. Yeah. But then when when he when uh, Artie called me about Mac, I was like, I'm not letting that happen again. So I was like, bring Mac up. He brought him like this is before his first mixtape or anything. Yeah, yeah. Like kids came out the day after he came to my radio show. Okay. So he came up and I was like, yo, come to the crib. He came to the crib. He's sitting there bugging the fuck out. And I called Term, and I'm like, yo, this kid Mac said you're one of his favorite rappers. And Term's like, I ain't coming to New York right now. Like, you know, he's in Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, listen to me. Come to New York right now. We're gonna do a song tonight. And he's like, all right, bro. He got there like probably two in the morning. We started the song and Mac had a show at SOBs. And he's like, yo, I'll be back. I'm gonna do the show. We're like, you're not coming back. Yo, he came back at like four in the morning. At this point, we're all twisted, all of us. And they finished the song. That's why if you listen to the song, like terms like, da -da 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 -da, he twisted. Like, that was a very uh, fun session. It was Mac's 18th birthday. That's wow, crazy. so young. Was it, what's like a Mac Miller memory that stands out for you? Um, I have a lot. I bet. One time, 
I made him take the train with me back to Brooklyn. And this is when he was like starting to crack more, like people knew who he was and shit. But he had like 10, 10 of these young kids from Pittsburgh with him. And I'm like, I'm not paying for five cabs, bro. Like, <laughs> we're, we're taking the train. And we took the train. And I remember being on the train, just like giving them jewels and shit. And people on the train looking at us like, what the fuck are these dudes talking about? Like, there was like dudes on the train looking at us like, these dudes are talking about crazy. Like, it was just funny because, you know, we went back and. Man, Mac, Mac was a special, special spirit. Another one was um, Freeway, hadn't heard of him yet, but I was like, this kid is special, he's from Pennsylvania, and me and Freeway were doing a live album. Yeah. And I was like, you gotta, I was like, you gotta, um, you know, this kid has to come through and do it. So he showed up and Mac was like fanning out. And Free's like, let's do it. And we made that song PA. And it was like, it was live on live stream or whatever it was back then, you stream or yeah, live stream. Yeah. And what a moment, man. They ended up performing it. Freeway just posted a clip last week of them performing it in Philly. And it's just like, that's like an anthem out there now. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Uh, so one of, one of my favorite verses all time, I'm a lyricist, lyricist, favorite verses all time, Black Dog, Bird's Eye View. Crazy. Done in the womb, the whole night, everything. Were you there when he recorded that? Bro, he recorded that shit in my closet. Oh, really? <laughs> Damn, son. He, he had his kids and wife outside in, a, in like an SUV waiting. And he came in the house. He was in, he was probably in my crib for four minutes. For real? He's like, I was like, this is what I want to do on the hook. I'm out of scratch. He goes, bro, I got time for this. Just play the beat, like press record. And he spit the rhythm. Easy Money was there and CJ Fly was there. Yeah. And we all did. I, when he got to 16 bars, I was about to press space bar to end it. And he kept going. I was like, and I looked at Easy and CJ and they were all like, we were just like all frozen. And he's like, yo, is that cool? I'm out. And he left. And we were all just, there was a quietness for about <laughs> like 10 minutes in my house. We just sat there like, what the fuck? Just happened. That's like some superhero shit. Yeah, how often when you're working with artists do they come in and it's just like in and out and you're like, oh, this nah, is that, last that don't usually happen. No, black, usually black Dogs, most of the time they take too long. <laughs> Not everybody. I think out of everybody, obviously Black Dog, but he's, a, he's an alien. Me and Joey might have the best workflow, like where he knows if he's coming to my studio, we're knocking out five songs that night. Like it just is what it is. How many Joey badass songs about have you done right now? When he does a show, about like seventy-five percent of the songs. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. So we got an album coming, but we got a, we got something coming soon. You, some, you've won with Nems too. Coming, yeah, right? we have an album too. The OT, the real one, was really dope. Thanks, man. Shout out to you. Really appreciated that album. Yeah. So you're always working with people like OT, the real, Term, Nems, like underground, gruff, hip hop, tough guy, shit like that. Mike Posner. I just went up with Mike Posner, which is a dope track, by the way. I think it was one of those like Twitter or IG. I don't even think IG was out yet. Um, Action Bronson? Nah, that had nothing to do with it. Isn't, wasn't he on that track? Yeah, that had nothing to do with him. I just I DM'd Mike Posner. Like, he followed me on Twitter, and I was like, yo, I'm going to send you a record. Then he sent it right back. I've only met him like I met him at uh, Coachella once. He's mad cool, but that's the only interaction we ever had. What's the most like out of the box person you shot for and got? I mean, Boys to Men hit me up, Damn. and then I ended up putting Sean on the song with Mac. Uh, that was pretty crazy because I like Boys to Men's the first CD I ever owned in my life. Okay, <laughs> like CD, not okay, yeah, 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 first yeah, yeah. CD I ever owned was Boys was like, you know, the Motown Philly album. Yeah. Um, you guys go back tomorrow. So. So you're like, you're, like you said, you're signed to rock at the time, you're signed to nah, you got this going on. And all of a sudden you hit M. Like as, and at the time too, like M is like- I've been gold. on his radio station for 20 years. That's what I'm saying. When you when you started with him, he was like the gold, he was just popping gold standard. As someone underground hip hop, that was where everybody wanted to get. And you got there. So what is that like? M's a go-to, man. How do, you like, meet, how do you meet him? Like, how does that? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I've only met him once in my life, and it, and it was before, like, he didn't even know who I was. So it's funny. We got, like, three songs together. We got all this history. In Detroit and, versus everybody, right? Yeah, we got a couple. Which we got Richard. Now, right? Yeah, it's about to be. Um, I got a plaque for that, though. You've been working for Shady Records for 20 years, and you're yeah, only Shady 45, but it's, you know, Shady Records radio station. Yeah, yeah, so he must he must really is like that enigma of a person, huh? Yeah, shout out to Paul, though, because Paul is very, like, he's he's the ears behind a lot of it, and Royce, too. Royce put that record together on the low, like, okay. um, Paul heard me play the beat on the radio. I actually didn't even play the beat. I played the sample, and he's like, you need to make a beat with that. I'm like, I already did. I forgot to bring it to the station that night, and I sent it to him, and... Royce went in and did what he did, and like now the rest is history. That's the anthem out there. They play it all the games. They play it. At, it's like this, you know. It's just kind of wild once you get like anthems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, man. Like 
just going back to your catalog and everything, how do you figure out who you want to do like collab albums with? Because you have some crazy, yeah, crazy, feels right, crazy right? collab albums. What's like your, your favorite one or one that really sticks out to you that you're proud of? The one guy with the Apple Lemonade that was sold out. Well, that's hard to even answer, man. I love the show with Freddie Gibbs, with Freeway, with, I mean, Trill Static's a series now. We're doing Trill Static 4, December 4th. It's the anniversary of Pimp C's uh, death. We're doing it in Houston this time. Because we always did it in New York. We're doing it in Houston this time. Yeah, when did the connection with Bun B first come about? That came about through term because somehow I think like Dan Green or someone talked to Bun and he was like, yo, I'm a fan of terminology because of Watch Out Go Down. Okay. And we sent Bun uh, How We Rock, you know, which is Primo yeah. too. And I forget exactly what happened, but it was around the time I dropped my first album. Bun was like, yo, I'm a fan of you too. And we... Shout out to Dan Green, man. We, we, got, we got so much history. But this dude passed out, right? Yeah. We're at South by Southwest, 2007 or 6. I think it's 2007. And Bun's like, yo, it's my birthday. I'm having a birthday party in Houston tonight. We're in Austin. And Dan, like, passed out. We took his credit card out of his wallet and rented a car. And went to Houston. And that's how we met Bun. And after that, like, the rest is history. Like, every time he comes to New York, you know, this is how many years later now. Right. Almost 20 years. But, um, you know, Bun is family, man. Like, So when you do these full, like, these Trillmatic albums. Trill Static, yeah. Trill Static albums. Trill Static albums. Uh, you bang these out in, like, 20, these are, like... 12 hours. Yeah. It's live on, well, the first one was on YouTube, but now we do Twitch. Um, it's live, the fans watch, they can chime in, and you know, everybody comes through. Like, the first one we had Fat Joe, Met the Man, Quali. Quali was in LA watching us. Okay. Got on a flight and went straight to the studio and made it. Like, shit like that's cool. So are you, when you're doing something that's in 12 hours, are you pre-picking the beats for that, or are you just doing everything off the top of your head Probably, as you go? Like, the first one we picked most of the beats ahead of time. The second one we picked some of them there. The third one we were like, I was literally like making beats at the session, and Bun was like, "Yeah, put that on there." That's dope. Yeah. Okay. So you put so many people on records. What's like the the most randomest, like or classicest, or like you know what I mean? Like most sticking out two people. I mean, got on the record. Joey and Nas together was big for me because everybody when Joey came out as a kid, they were like, "Yo, it reminds me of the young Nas," okay. and to put them together. Together, it just all like so many different angles worked for that and then COVID happens like right as we were putting that song together so it like almost didn't happen and it took it was like a six month delay but we finally got it done that was exciting I remember hearing like you were the king of this shit back in the day too I remember hearing like Black Republican come out like way before like you always had the shit I know there was a crazy controversy story behind that it's a crazy story, crazy story behind that you could tell us that but not even that I, that is but I'm also curious what's like the the oh, biggest the biggest thing that you've got that you've had to hold on to that turned into the biggest record um that you just had to sit on and be like fuck that was that was a pretty crazy one because you know it was the first real Jay Nas record um I got mad shit right now that I can only imagine your your hard drive must be crazy. Yeah, yeah I was playing, I was crazy. bugging out with my man Doug last night in Dom Dirty. We were, I was just playing unreleased joints like of people getting dissed and all that like crazy shit that never come out. I got a Paul Wall Nas record that's crazy. Oh shit! I got a, um I got I got some crazy. I have a lot of you know Kanye and. J records and just crazy unreleased shit. That, but, that's gonna um, be pretty cool being like on the Kanye albums. Like, what, what parts did you play on the Kanye? I albums? just did a couple drums on uh, "Lost in the World" and "Hell of a Life," but all that shit gets so buried. Like, I was upset about it for a couple of years, and I seen Ye at Coachella, and we kind of like made up after I was I was I was talking a lot of shit for a little while. I didn't even because I just felt like I got like. Like certain people come in the room and like will have an idea and say it and they'll get like co-production credit or like random shit and I like you know I did more than that on that song like the the part on Lost in the World it's like doom 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 that shit is out of my Serato and it's like shit won a Grammy for a rap album of the year like it would be nice to be included yeah. in all that and it's like people did that to Ye too like when he was coming up I'm not gonna say no names but certain producers were like taking his shit and not giving him credit. So it's like, you, it is what it is. All good? Hey. Yeah, I heard that now you have, when you have like a sample that you're like, it's gonna be held against this beard, you have like a guy you go to. Oh, yeah, this, uh, like a oh. 
I got I got the best in the world, man. Shout out to Dream Life, Moon Latte. I got some crazy cats. So that's got to like have exp expedited yeah. the process. Absolutely. When, when you're like in hip hop, I mean, obviously you're super accomplished. You've been around forever. You're you're OG in the game. But at the end of the day, you're a fan still. You're a fan of hip hop. You still like, love the shit, man. So was there a moment in time that like you've ever been doing what you do? And you sat back and you just could not believe the situation that you were in, who you were surrounded by. I mean, right. the Kanye sessions were wild. I remember I was like, yeah, what were they? I, I told him to come over and I like whispered in his ear. I was like, yo, I'm like, picture like when you first got with like Jay or whoever. Like, and I'm like, look around the room, bro. And he looked around and I remember he goes, it's all right. This is who's in the room. Yeah, I was we're, gonna ask. we're in Hawaii. It's Nas. I brought Nas with me. Q-Tip, the RZA, Common, Clips. Um, I know I'm forgetting people. Uh, shit. Let's just say that's who's there, right? Mike Dean, shout out to Mike. And I, he, he like stops the song and he's like, yo man, I got the illest cats of all time. And he starts like shouting everybody out. And at the end of it, it's like straight out of a Dave Chappelle skit. He like names everybody in the room and then he's like, but I'm the greatest to ever do it. It was like a humble moment and Kanye just like went super Kanye and was like, but I'm the best of all time. <laughs> it was funny. But I was like, I told, like I whispered, I was like, dude, this is like a big moment for me just to like be here watching this. And like, it was an experience. Consequence was that I got a shot up the that's, that's really cool that you get to travel the world and do that because at the very beginning like what's the first like mixtape you ever had first mixtape ever had or bought a first like it's the first moment into hip hop the first moment in hip hop I think is when I seen the my cousin had LL Cool J radio that was probably the first moment I was like what like what's this about I was like probably four or five years old and then later when I saw the scenario video I was like it, it caught me like I want to be part of this and like okay. that was like the first when I really start like I was listening to MC Hammer before that like after that I started getting more into like you know Tribe and Gangstar yeah. and Wu-Tang and all that but that was a moment I remember DJ Dead I was saying that when everybody else would be sitting around working and they'd be like if we ever get to work with this producer if we ever get to work with that producer you would be like when we are working yeah, yeah. with DJ Premier like you had a I never like from the day I decided I was going to be a DJ I was like I never said oh my dream never said that I was like this is what I'm going to do with my life that's it that's like, amazing there was no there was no like you're an example of manifesting like yeah. I guess your dreams what is it like one of my favorite rap albums of all time is Monkey Bars you worked a lot with Sean Price and he's just a hilarious. You were working on an album. Yeah, you were working on an album. What was that supposed to be? Oh, we know. Just Sean was at my crib like a couple times a week. Okay, like, especially towards the end. But he um. It's hard to talk about. Were you ever planning on putting any of that stuff out? It's all out now. I got a couple on these Sean joints. I got a joint with Sean Cormega and Rock Marciano. Okay. What's, what's the biggest song that you have that you'll never release? Good question. <laughs> uh, I don't know. A lot of it's coming out. This, this 2 Chains album. I can't talk about it because it's like yeah. this shit. I'm talking about whatever you think, how big it is. It's bigger. It's like the biggest R&B singers, the biggest features, like whoever you think is the biggest in the world is on this album. You know what I remember? I remember like we were all back in 2004, 5, 6 doing like lead shows, the Middle East and shit. We'd all be back in that little tiny room. And then one day you came back and you had pictures from Mariah Carey's birthday party. That was that was probably way before that. That was like yeah. 2001. Well, how did you end up? How did like Chubby Chubb? He was DJing. Uh, it was on Boylston Ave. That was when I still lived in Boston. Cause that was like I remember like that happening and being like, oh shit, he's about to like it's about to pop. <laughs> nah, that, I was just like, I used to carry Chubb's crates, man. Shout out to Chubb. But, like that was way back, bro. That might have been that was 2001. What's the moment like you knew that you were officially doing it? And you ain't carrying crates no more. Like, if you had time. Going, like, going on, you know, 30 city tours with Q-Tip and shit. Like, that was... What well, was that, the first tour you went on with Q-Tip? The first tour, yeah, it was 2009. I mean, I toured before that. Me and Rex used to open for, like, Dayla. Like, oh, okay. We do, like, little East Coast tours. But the first, like, nation... Not even nationwide. Me and Tip started in Tokyo. Then we went to Australia. Then we did, like, all over Europe. Like, that was my first world tour. You can get crazy stories about 
kids of how like, eccentric he is and how, how like just idiosyncrasy. He's just the ultimate artist, man. You got any good stories about working with him? Yeah, um, one time I, I went to his crib and he was like, Fife had passed away already. And I was just in his crib, like excited to hear what he was, like his new album he was working on. The Last Zulu that's been, now, that, that shit's like 10 years in the making now. Um, but that's not what he played me. He started fade faders up on the board. He got the board that like Blondie and like Prince used it, like the actual board. Wow. <laughs> and he's bringing up the faders. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, what's going on here? I hear the scratching. And all of a sudden I hear Fife's voice. I'm like, what's going on here? And he, Fife's verse comes in and he's bringing up snare, kick, bass line. And I'm like, you got to unrelease Fife first? And he's like, no, we got an album. Oh shit. I'm like, what? He had a whole fucking tribe album. So like, that was one of the, that shit hit me. Like, I, I just got goosebumps thinking about it. It hit me like a Mack drum. Like, I heard the tribe album before, like, way before they put it out. I remember it came out like the week that Trump got inaugurated or some shit. Dave Chappelle did SNL and all that. Yeah. But, um, like, you know, Tim, Tim's played me like, like, probably 50 unreleased songs. He got a really crazy catalog. Do you have I have a favorite song of all time. Just uh, you know, ballpark. I mean, I used to love it. It's one of my favorite songs. Okay. Oh, there, so there you go. Okay. I just met Tom, and that was awesome. As a Dude. DJ, what's something you can put on a song you can put on that hits every single time? New York State of Mind. Yeah, definitely. I, I didn't get this a second ago, but what's the standout, like hilarious Sean Price memory? Um, let me think. A lot of the stories he told, but that that doesn't like count really because it's just stories. I'm trying to think of like an experience. One time, yo, shout out to Rock Miss Monster, man. One time I drove them from from Manhattan to Boston to do the Middle East. And they didn't say a word to each other the entire fucking drive. We get to Boston, they go on stage and annihilate it and get back in the car and we go back and they don't say a word to each other the whole ride. Like it was like, it's so bugged out, man. That is super bizarre. What, uh, what, what would you say to somebody, and I'm sure you get asked this all the time, like genuinely asked this, not in interviews, but like to, a, to somebody who's trying to make it and have a career like yours, like are there certain like things, like a couple things that stand out where you're like, I was doing these and I could see other people not doing them. Just stick to like the, the child in you, like what, like every day I just try to impress the 12 year old version of me that was like idolizing all this shit. Yeah. It's like I still do to it like a certain extent, but it's like now, you know. That's it. Like, I, I watched so many people. A DJ came up to me last week and was like, you still DJ? I'm like, what the fuck kind of question is that? And she, it was a girl. She was like, oh, I don't play hip hop no more. And I'm like, I thought that was kind of corny. I'm like, yeah. what do you mean? She's like, I play techno now because it's where... I'm like, and I've seen hip hop DJs do that before where they like just completely go a different route. And I'm like, what, like, what were you even in it for in the beginning? Like, what, what are you doing? Well, actually, I'd have to ask you this too. Especially being like so much time spent in New York, the epicenter. But it's like, in terms of younger producers, like the Metro Boomin producers. I don't even look at him as young. Like that's yeah, he's yeah younger, I guess younger, younger. <laughs> Sorry. What? But who stands out to you that that like clearly I probably don't even know of that um, we should be checking for? I always get stuck on this because I have like a list of people I could say, but I'm going super blank. Um, MCs as well too, like yeah, yeah. Who should I even well, be? MCs is a lot easier. Okay, yeah. We'll just like do that. I really fuck with Corday, Lord Sko, who's like 20 years old. Oh, I don't even know. Yeah. Super dope. Okay. Um, you know, the, it's funny because all the pro era kids are like 30 now, which is bugged out. Right, um, wild. I would definitely say Corday. Um, who else? Uh, Everybody I'm thinking of is older now. Sko got like a whole generation of kids with him, like Wise Boy Jeremy, super dope. Yeah. Um, okay, Lexa there. Gates. Okay. I actually mixed, him, uh, mixed her album. Like people don't even know him behind that shit. But um, what is something that you've done that people would have no idea that you're behind? Probably some like mixing or like recording. Like I did. Um, I engineered like a lot of random shit. I recorded uh, Primo's cuts on um, the f 
Fat Joe that way. And it's in the credits and all that. Shout out to Preem for actually making sure I got the credits for that. But like, just doing random shit like that was yeah. like bugged out to me. Because I'm a kid that grew up reading credits. Like, shout out my man Neff, who's a super dope producer. You know, he's not too young, but he's younger. And he uh, he's like Preem's assistant now. And he's recording all these like Nas songs. And like, it's bugged out. Obviously, they it's not a secret no more. But Nas and Primo announced the album's coming. Um, and he's like recording all that shit. So it's like I think about from that, it's bugged out. Um, what else? I did uh, a lot of West Side Gun shit. Like the new West Side Gun project about to come out. I, I mixed the whole thing. Oh, nice. I mean, um, I love Griselda. I was going to ask about this Boldy album too. Which one? You have one coming out, right? Yeah, but we used. I have like three songs now that no one's heard, but we okay, used we used know. a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, but that's coming. Um, Do you ever? Me and Stove God got. Top secret project on the way. Okay, I know he has an out. Is it the one with West Side Gun? Did he say okay? Do you ever run into these West Coast, like these legends from the West Coast? Like, have you run into Two Short Spice One? Yeah. Like all these Spice One's been on my show. Okay. Two Shorts could do. Um, I never went. Matt Dre before he passed. Me and Snoop are like really cool. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know Matt Dre. Um, I mean, I fuck with like. I fuck with a lot of West Coast cats. Exhibit's like one of my dear friends. Like, really? Me and Exhibit will go like drinking and not even talk about music. Like, that's my bro. Um, that's super dope. He just signed to Conor McGregor. I don't know if you saw yeah, that. Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> super dope. I'm I'm happy for him because he he does it so big. So like, someone like Exhibit just can't randomly drop something. He got to do it like big. Right. And having Conor McGregor behind it, and he still works with Dre and all that. Like, you know, Exhibit was like head A and R aftermath for years. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, yeah, he, he's behind a lot of shit. Um, what else? I love the West Coast. I had a crib in LA. You know me and Slane had a crib in LA. No, I didn't. Uh, How long were you and Slane living together in LA? Like, oh, you know E Skills, 88.9. Yeah. So oh, it, was, with him? it was E, me, and Slane, but me and Slane were never in town at the same time. So we just like had this like room full of like diamond supply and like all the clothes we got in LA would just like be in the closet yeah. and whoever was there during it. But not, most of the time I'd be at Alchemist Crib. So it was like, I think I had that apartment for almost two years and I slept there like five times. <laughs> Crazy life. Yeah. Alchemist just won some. I'm so award. happy for him. What he, was the award he, he won? Do you- he won DJ of the year. Year, which is that's cool like that's cool but he won producer of the year okay and that's like he needs that at, B, at the BET Awards yeah and like to me you know, I mean when I think of like we were talking about before Zarface Run the Jewels I'd have to say you and I'd also put Alchemist yeah he re- reinvents like, himself every year yeah he and he has like legions of die hard fans yeah man <laughs> and he yeah. really he really kills it with the merch and the yeah well drops. him and Rock Marciano were on Newberry Street a couple years ago just doing like an album signing or whatever and the line was like a three hour line yeah. stretching down Newberry Street people were going nuts. if you get the vinyl at one of those it's gonna be a piece that's worth like you know well yeah I don't think I went in with a thousand dollars in cash and I spent it all because that's how crazy I was yeah. and it's not even resellers it's like kids that really collect the shit yeah no for sure cause sometimes you go to drops like that and it's like a bunch of like random like 50 year old dudes like trying to buy them to resell them yeah yeah that's not what's in line no no people that know every single one of him and uh, Rock Marciano's tracks um, what was, oh, I was just thinking Prodigy memories because Prodigy was one of the nicest guys that I never thought was going to be so nice yeah. but every time it wasn't always but the last like I'd say like the last you know what when he got out of jail he was like a whole different person and like he was really loving life towards the end well he came through underground hip hop and I think we did the last interview before he went to jail and I was all nervous I'm like in but I'm like, he's one of my, uh, you know, all time. But yeah, what do you? Uh... I talk to his daughter a lot. Like she oh, comes, really? Yeah, she comes to my bar and like. Your bar? Just, yeah, in uh, New what's, York. What's your bar? So everybody knows it is Fat Buddha, but it's called Hidden Tiger now. Oh, Fat Buddha. Hit, yeah. yeah. Okay, I didn't realize that was yours. I mean, there's just a birthday. I own a chunk of it. Oh, okay. Um, but shout my partner Cliff, who was always like he always owned Fat Buddha. Um, but like, you know. Santana Fox, man, P's daughter. She, uh, she's good people, and I'm pr- I'm super proud of her. Cause when she first started rapping, I was like, here we go, another like kid of a rapper trying yeah. to be a rapper. And she's killing it, man. Her beats are really good. You know, Al's Al's a saint because he like just lets her hang out and take it all in, and like she's there learning how to make beats, and like he helps her with a lot of shit. And um, yeah, man, I'm super. And happy. Al was a sponge. 
to Muggs. Like when Muggs yeah. was recording Temples of Boom, Al was there for, I guess, most of that process. Yeah, Muggs, he, Muggs produced The Hooligans, which was Al oh, that's and right. Scott Kahn. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That rap group. Was there anyone that you were a sponge to in the way that Pr- Al was? Primo. Primo. But you but you weren't right there with Primo. Yeah, I or, was. Or you were? Yeah. Maybe I didn't even know what's, that. What's, I've probably been at more Primo sessions when he made beats than like most people. At he D- doesn't at let D- people. D- studio? Nah, this guy quarters. Can you give us like a little insight to what a Primo session is like? Yeah. Nobody's allowed, I'll tell you that. Like, I'm talking about when he's actually making the beat. Yeah. He makes everybody go out in the lobby, like... You're not seeing him make a beat. Is it you know? true that like he does it like for the person on the spot and all that? Yeah, but the funny thing is, watch beats. how go down. You know, me and Term were like harass, not harassing. Term was harassing him, but I would be like Term, chill. Like we're gonna wait for the right moment. And one day, we're in the, I'm, in, I'm just there, and Primo's playing us stuff. It's me and my boy Doug York, and Prem just plays this beat. And it's like dun 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 dun. Watch how go down. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And it was actually for Alchemist, and Al never rapped really? for it. Al told me later, like he just like, I don't think he was scared to rap on it, but he like just he never got to it for whatever reason. And Preem's like, yeah, and Al's like dragging his feet. So you think Term would want this? And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like we still paid for it. Don't get it twisted. But I called Term and he played it, and Term's going crazy. And uh, the rest is history. But the the reason I'm bringing that up about making beats. When we went to the actual session to record it, Preem tried to load the disc, and it, it didn't work. It was gone. Oh, so yeah. it, me and Trevor looking at each other like, oh, no, yeah. like, what do we do? Because we couldn't use the two-track. It just it wasn't, like, mixed or anything. And Preem's like, I have to remake the beat right now. And we're all like, oh, my God. Like, everybody was stressed out. You know, probably, like, less than an hour later, he had the beat, like, all oh, So he pretty, actually remade He remade the whole shit, did the cuts and, over all that. And from what I know about producers, that's extremely hot to do yeah well this is, this it, is it wasn't exact like i have the original version i'll play it sometime it's like the drums are like it's the same drums but they're like pitch different okay i mean that's like a reminder of like well this is up there with uh i think inspected deck losing an album in the flood at riz's place but naj losing all the lyrics to illmatic on the train oh i never know, heard DJ that premiere. really yeah okay I read I got, that and that one stuck with me. I got some alternative versions of Illmatic that are pretty crazy. Really? Oh, yeah. You got alternative versions of Illmatic? Yeah. How, do you, shit, get, nobody how, how like, do you get your hands on something like that? You know a lot of people, man. Nah. I mean, Preem's giving me some stuff. Um, I got stuff that, like, nobody got. I got, like, a demo of Halftime where Nod spits a whole different song. No, I got some crazy shit. So every now and then, like, are you at the crib and, like, whoever your friends are over at the day, you just put some what? shit on that? Like, what the fuck? Oh, I'll play it. it. Like, I'll play it right now. I'll go out there and play it. Like, Preem's giving me shit where he's like, don't give it to anybody, but you can play it. Can, just like cover, you know, play drops over it or whatever. Have you have you had any, I mean, I know you party hard. Have you had anybody, but you also have a tight circle. Have you already had anybody at your crib who's like left with some shit and then you hear it leak? Nah. Like these horror no, stories like that. They'll, they'll get really bad hurt. Wasn't right, the, right, right. Wasn't the or even just emailing like that? Stuff. Nah, never. Okay. Huh? I thought I thought Black Republican was something like that. I thought nah, somebody like put it I, on I'm it. not gonna throw nobody on the bus, but a very big legend gave me that song and probably shouldn't have. And I let Chubby Chubb have it and Chubb played it on Shade 45 when he was doing a guest set. And I, I was very upset about it because I trusted him not to do that. So me, I was like, well, now that it's on the internet with Chubb talking over it, I was like, we might as well take advantage of it and play it on a real mixtape. So me and Big Mike, I called Big Mike and I'm like, yo, but like, you know, at the time, this guy's the biggest in the game when it comes to like putting out numbers of mixtapes and exclusives. I was like, I got this, but this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna call the labels and be like, we got the J Nas record. We're putting it out like tomorrow on this mixtape. Let's um let's use that as like wait with exclusives. They sent me the whole clips album. Okay. This is all shit. None of it was out. They, like That's I had rappers doing me. freestyles, all oh, that like you because they knew it was gonna be the big, biggest yeah. mixtape out. Yep. Me and Mike pressed ten thousand CDs, and within two hours we didn't have any left, and it was it was already done. Like once you got on Canal Street back then, yeah, it was all over the world. That's where I got on my Rolexes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's crazy. Shit, I should have done that. I would have saved some money. Um. Because at the time, too, for context, for anyone that would be younger that's watching this, like, Jay and Nas hadn't done records yet. Yeah, the takeover no, had just come out. Ether was out. So, like, it was, that was a big fucking deal. So at the time, Chubb was, uh, Chubb was Khaleesi's DJ, and Nas okay. was married to it at the time. Yeah. So he calls me, and he's like, yo, you put it on the mixtape. Like, Nas is looking for you. 
And I was like, oh man, he's like, if I was you, I wouldn't be in New York right now. Yeah. So, the way I've always been with shit like that is I, I like go right at the problem immediately. So I called Mike Brinkley, who I remind you later on when I'm, he's at Rock Nation later managing me. And it's just funny how it all came full circle. But anyway, I called Mike Brinkley and I'm like, yeah, I heard Nas is looking for me. And he goes, yeah, he wants you to do his new mixtape. And that's when I did the Def Jam. So I'm calling him thinking like, this guy wants me dead. He's like, he wants you to do the official mixtape for this album. And that's how like, this that's is what, fucked when, up. when skills take over, man. That's I'm sure there's been a few times where you've had to catch a flight immediately. Like we're working on like a Kanye West thing. I know nah, I'm coming to Wyoming. <laughs> nah, I, I, don't, I never went to none of those. Okay. The Hawaii shit, I was out there with Nas. And um, they heard that I was out there, and I went to breakfast at Kanye's crib. And like, this shit is like straight out of Chappelle show, bro. I go down a dead end street. This is in Honolulu. And I'm like, which house is it? There's three houses. It's like a, you know, a cul de sac or whatever. So I hear people talking. So I walk around, and like, the door is like kind of cracked. And I'm like, I walk in, and there's just like Adam's family looking table with Kanye, Tip, Pete Rock, like RZA. Everybody's just sitting at the thing. And Kanye's like, where you been? And I'm like, I just got out of jail. Like, I went from the fucking central booking in New York to the airport. Greenland was bugging out because Greenland was in Europe or some shit. And he had me filling in the DJ for Nas. So I get to Hawaii, I go to this breakfast, and Kanye's like, put your feet in my waterfall. Here's a personal chef. And they're making me an omelet while I'm sitting in a waterfall. Like, it's so crazy. And then um, I went back to the hotel and I see Nas in the lobby and he's like, where you been? I'm like, I was at Ye's house. He's like, oh, well, Let's, let's go to the studio in later. I was like, okay. So I, the whole shit was bananas. So we got to ask that. Yeah, wait. What were you locked up for first? <laughs> Stupid shit. Okay. Fucking. Sorry, go you got to ask because he's, he's in the news all over the place now. You, you met Diddy? I know Puff, bro. Like, I've been to a lot of parties at Diddy's house. I know that sounds crazy. I never seen, I've never. i been partying with Puff since I was 17 years old. I've never seen anything foul at no party. How old were you when you came in the game? I started radio at 14. How'd you do that? So, I, <laughs> I grew up in, like, Greater Lawrence, right? Yeah. My parents got divorced. My dad worked in Exeter, New Hampshire, where Phillips Academy is. He just had, like, a screw machine company. Okay. Like, they made, like, parts and shit, right? So... When I went, like, you know, my whole life gets turned upside down. My mom, out of wanting her son to be with it, like, around his dad, she moves to the same town. So I'm going to Exeter, you know, uh, junior high school, right? And they're like, every semester they give a radio show to a local kids. You know, I don't know if you know what Phillips Exeter is. It's like, it's Harvard, bro. It's like, like I've seen like 10 shirts here today of people wearing, it's a, it's a prep school for like going to Yale and Harvard and all that. Mark Zuckerberg was going at the time. Okay. But I just went to the local school, like the area school, you know? But they had to give radio shows to four people every semester from, from the town, like locals. Yeah. They seemed like a charity case, pretty much. And I would write essays, and the second time I wrote an essay, they, they gave me a show. And um, so I was on the radio at 14, and then I did it probably until I was like 17, and after that I started doing a lot of clubs. Like, I was already doing parties, but I started doing more clubs. And then when I moved to Boston, I was doing a lot of guest appearance on 88.9 while I was working on 197. Were you guys on the same time? I think I DJ there a couple times when you were yeah. there. This is like 2000. Um, before my, before, before I... Before like my... Uh, you want to show off some promotion yeah. starts or... Nah, I started that in like 2002 or 3. Because you guys, when you first started that, you guys like huge clients. Where the bad? Like, well, you yeah, because like, I worked at Metro Concepts first. Then I went to Indie Pro with Eddie Q. And I was like... Unit sneakers and shit like that? I did all G-Unit shit. All yeah, of you're doing that. Did you like... You did like rock the vote, I think. Like, I did all that shit, shit. That's yeah. what's funny when you mentioned Diddy. It's like... How did, how so did you get... Like, as a small star... That's not even how I met Puff, though. Like, I met Puff through my cousin who... she She's worked all over Hollywood and all that. And she used to like hang out with Puff all the time because she was like I think at the time she was working with Nicole Kidman so one night me and my cousin my other cousin had dinner in New York and like I think we walked to like Cat's Deli and came back and I set the table and it's like Lenny Kravitz Nicole Kidman all of a sudden Puff sits down he's like y'all want to go party? I was like yeah I've been like bored all night let's go and we went to a lobby bar and Puff's like got his arm around me and grabs a mic he's like drinks on me for the rest of the night and the whole club's like ah! this is like peak New York City club days this is 90 I'm fucking 17 years old and then um yeah so like anyway all that being said 
That, the Puff situation's crazy, but don't believe everything you read. The, the bad video of him kicking Cassie is horrible, man. Yeah. It makes it all bad. So fucking, but show off though, like, when you, when you like, where does that name come up? How do you, how do you, like, do you remember, is that when you're Brandon in them? Or like, how do you meet Brandon? So Brandon worked for me at, at uh, Indie Pro, and then we started kind of, we like started show off together, but it was me and Eddie Q, and then um, Brandon kind of like held it down after I moved to New York. Okay. Not kind of, he held it down when I moved to New York. Were you there? Uh, in the Farmington, Connecticut, Mansion Days, 50 Cent's got a club in the Bro, are you kidding me? <laughs> I got crazy photos right here. Yeah? <laughs> crazy photos, man. So what was it? Like a whole dance club? No. In like the basement yeah, it was of the strip club. Was that yeah. Mike Tyson? Okay. Is that the Mike Tyson house? Yeah. Oh yeah, is that the Mike Tyson? I got, you want to know how much of a fucking mess I was back then? Yeah. I lived in New York at the time, and I forgot because of how much we drank at 50's house, and I drove to Boston. Like, I drove to yeah, Boston, yeah. and got here, and I was like, I don't live here anymore. <laughs> oh, no, you know, act, not going to work, thank God, thank God, I like, you know, I should not have been driving that night. And 50 wasn't, he doesn't, he doesn't drink or he does drink, he doesn't. He drinks like champagne once in a while. Okay, okay. So I hear that you're the hottest working guy in show business. But then you also hear that 50's the hottest show, working guy in show business. The what? You hear that 50's the hottest working guy in yeah, show nah, business. Yeah, no, 50 is, uh. So what's like, a, what's 50 like dealing with him? Like, he's just, he, he don't play no games, so he's straight to the point. Like, you don't waste nobody's time. He's just, I watched his whole, rest in peace Chris Lighty, man. I used to be on conference calls with those guys every, like every other day, and they were they never played no games. So you were there from the beginning when he was like just getting shot all the way up to like the shady right. Right after shit. he got shot, before he signed the shady. Yeah, so that must that must have been like that's almost like a meteoric rise, like watching it was someone fast. Go. I remember like on the calls they'd be like, we think we're signing to Jive, but Eminem wants to sign us, like or Dr. Dre, but like it was, Jive Records almost got fifty. Did you ever do a song with 50? I did an official G unit mixtape, but uh, he's never like formally rapped on one of my beats. I've worked with Banks a lot, um, Yayo, Cool Kid, but like 50's never actually rapped on one of my beats. I, I love Lloyd Banks, his whole corner mixtapes are some of my favorite ones. He's just such a spitter. Is there someone as a hip hop fan that you haven't got to work with that you'd love to? Kendrick. Um, I mean, obviously, Hove, there's been a couple of songs that were supposed to be finalized that didn't come out. Um, Have you been in a room with Jay-Z? Or a lot of people. Oh, what am I talking about? Yeah. But how often do you see him when you're working? You see him at, like, the Rock Nation brunches and, like, yeah. the fucking... You know what? I got a Jay-Z story that I've never told. Um, the day Kobe died, I was at the fucking Rock Nation office in L.A. And, like... The day before was the rock brunch. Everything was like, my 2020 was set up to be like, I was literally in a meeting with UTA, for, uh, the, the agency, yeah. while I, I stepped out to use the bathroom, and Jay's in the hallway like, what's going on? And I'm looking at him and like, I had so much I wanted to say, but it was, Kobe just died like hours before. Everybody was just like, devastated. Right. And I'm like, bro, I, I was like, I just want to get home with my kid. He's got failure, and that was, that's, I think that's the last time we fucking talked. Kind of, oh, no, nah, it's not, but it's, that was like a moment where like, there was so, because every time we do a Trill Static, Hove texts on me, and he's like, yo, this is so dope. I want really? okay. like, I got crazy texts from Hove, like breaking down how he, the, remember when he did the album, uh, the Samsung album? Magna Carta. You don't remember it came in the phones? Yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't dropped, like, officially in stores until later. Shit. Kind of, yeah, but it was the Samsung yeah, shit. The Samsung, well, yeah. So, Jay was like, yo, originally that I wanted to do a live album with that, and, like, it just didn't work out. So, like, oh, he, when me and Bun did the first one, he was like... And so, people forget, it was Bun B, uh, Pimp C, Big Pimp then, back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, at the height of... And we'll wrap it up here, because I know you gotta go, but at the height of G unit like fandom like how because I went trying to get 50 cent drop like 50 cent is here all the time and there were like 15 like porn star hot women just chasing down him and Yeo like coming out like but at the height of G unit what was it like it madness man like just madness good times man good times <laughs> you ever meet ODB do a song with him never oh did you ever meet Chino XL 
That was my fucking dog. Rest in peace, Chino, man. That was a good, good, like, good dude, man. He was like, one of the nicest he's guys. He's guys, I've like, met. I think I have a song or two with him, like, where I did scratches or something, but I didn't, like, we didn't even care talking about music. Like, he would text me, I'd play a song on the radio, and he'd be like, bro, you don't have to do that. Like, thank you so much. He was the most humble dude, nicest guy on the planet, man. Yeah, he's so nice. That's my main memory. And he's just so empathetic. Too. Dude, he was like, such a special be like looking person. into your soul as you have a conversation. Like, what a guy, man. You know, I got a funny Chino XL story. We were at A3C, and I had, like, stickers for one of my albums, and I was, like, putting them up. And you know how, like, you'll be doing something. Like, say you're passing out flyers or something, and you, like, need a third hand. Yeah. So you, like, put it in your mouth, like, just yeah. for a second. Bro, I put the sticker on my lip and was like, I'm about to put this up here. I climbed the pole, and I went like this, and it, like, ripped all the skin off my lip. And Chino XL sitting there like, dude, you got to put ice on it. Like, he sat with me until my lip... It's, it was like 45 minutes of a bleeding lip and he just stayed with me the whole time it was my first time meeting him he was the nicest guy ever that's crazy man yeah, all right well, to him, man. i want to say um yeah yeah thank you for your time uh you right. stayed I mean, over you hate doing podcasts but we've been here for like 45 minutes right now yeah so. no, great mean, stories no well you're, you're a state because I'm, I'm in boston bro this is like a and, it's a rare occurrence so. and i mean i've thanked you <laughs> before but like when I was at WERS and like reached out to you, you like held me down like crazy in terms of connecting us with people for live music week and getting artists and getting us in touch with the right people to get at record labels and artists and so many people that came through from live music week. And like I said, when we went out to Manhattan and did a stu- rented a studio for two days and I think in two days met like 50 of like some of my favorite artists. That's where I met Sean Price. Like just coming yeah. through. Just, they were just coming into the studio and we had like pounds of weed and we'd like bring them off of some weed and they'd have like shice bubs yeah. and all purple city in there so so after i stopped like i was on i was never like on 88.9 every week but i would do sets like a couple times a month yeah and like after that like a couple of years after that probably like 2003 or two I was with Cormega and he's like, yo, will you DJ for me on 88.9? Yeah. I was like, all right, but at the time I'm on Hot 97 every day, right? So I go there and this fucking guy, JCO, bro, comes up to me. I have like the sampler with all the drops in it. He comes up to me and goes, this ain't fucking Hot 97. And I remember, I remember Cormega looking at me and be like, what the fuck? Did you just, I'm like, shout out to JCO, that was corny as fuck. Yo, shout out to Cormega, because the last interview I did with him, we did it at Laced. And he uh, stood up in the middle of a question, asked if I'm the feds, and then walked out. <laughs> so he had, he's on the list of people who've walked. This is before Big Dookie came, so I wasn't yeah. shattering our image. Chris, Chris, I, Chris Farone's favorite rapper, man. Chris yeah, Chris Farone. Mega wanted to kill me for a little while. <laughs> uh, it was right when I moved to New York. Premier, like, I don't think Premier understood the way that the internet works with, like, exclusives. And he gave me Dirty Game, which was Core Mega and Primo. Yeah, I remember that. Everybody we, was we waiting. played that on ERS. Everybody was, like, waiting for the Core Mega Primo record. And Primo gave it to me to play on, like, XM Radio. This is before Sirius and XM were the same thing. It was, like, separate. And I played it, and yeah. someone recorded it and put it on, like, Box Den. And it was, like, on all hip-hop, hip-hop site. All those sites had the Core Mega Primo joint. With my drops all over it. <laughs> Mega called me, like... Fuck you, motherfucker! You know how long I've been keep like no one's supposed to have that song, and I understood why he was mad. But he like, dude, he wanted to kill me for a minute, and I was like, why are you mad at me? Primo gave it to me, but he. Uh, but now I'm Mega's sure. my brother. We got a project. Too. And I'm sure you had like just as as byproduct of being a DJ. That's how Nas should have felt with the with the Black Republicans joint. <laughs> but, but how have you had? Because even at ERS, I've had some artists like threatening me when um, I'm not putting them on the air. I, I'm not going to lie, Mega's the only one of the, <laughs> there's been a couple, but Mega's the only rapper to ever threaten me on some like DJ Clue leaking Biggie records. Yeah, like, yeah. Like Biggie had a hit out on DJ Clue. Okay. Like shit like that, Mega's the only one that got that mad ever. <laughs> ever. At undergroundhiphop.com, I did an interview with Mano where he said he was going to come back and shoot the place up. <laughs> that was good. Uh, That's for Karma Loop, actually. Bring and didn't you that. work for, you would do some like, no, you didn't do promotion. Anything? I mean, I knew all, like, I yeah, know yeah, Greg, Greg and all, and all of them. 
it's all blends together. But when I'm thinking of like like W E R S days, you're at the like <laughs> you're at the top of the myth mythological pyramid. Here. I grew up listening to man. Shout out to Clark Kent. I love you, bro. Like I used to hear him on E R S when I was like 13, man. Yeah, and we had him through underground hip hop, and uh, DJ On and On R I P was still Rest there. In peace. And that was like one of the most excited I've ever seen him was doing the Clark Kent interview. Speaking of like that right there, do you ever like being older now? Do you ever like look back in perspective and be like, holy shit, I'm not that I'm still doing this, it's like raw, like obviously we live it, but it's like You know who I use as like the, the meter with all that? It's Cream, man. He's about to be sixty years old. Oh my god. And he acts younger than me. Like his energy is like he's in better shape than he was ten years ago. Like Premier is like the the he's the blueprint for me. I can only imagine like for, as a fan standpoint and a, and a DJ standpoint when Premier takes you like under his wing and let you work next to him and learn from him. That must just be the big. We got two gigs together in the next like two weeks. We're doing uh, EFN's block party in Miami, and I'm doing West Side Guns uh, Chicago. He got like a wrestling event. It's Primo, Pete Rock, me, and a certain rapper that I can't say yet. People don't even know that yet. But it, Premier versus Pete Rock in a wrestling ring is gonna be fucking crazy. Premier versus Pete Rock in a wrestling ring. Chicago. That's gonna be go go. <laughs> that sounds that sounds amazing. I guess I got to go to Chicago. Derringer and Rome Streets. It's crazy. I love Derringer. Production. Yeah, man. And, and I just met Conductor last weekend. You can't call him Derringer anymore. It's just Darius. That's what. That's what. It's, if you're really cool with Derringer, it's just Darius. That's I'm not, I never met him, so you know. Uh, and nah, I met, it, and it's I met funny because he's such a terminology. He's such a Darius. Like Darius is a funny guy. That's my brother. Your phone's over there. Before we go, is there someone that we don't know about yet from a DJ point of view that's coming up next that we should look out for? I told you, Lord Sko. Um, shit. I hear people every week, man, on the radio. Uh, I ain't shot nobody out, man. They ain't cut no checks. Right, I just want to know <laughs> who can I connect with because I'm still single, man. I need to find a wife. I need to go to some of these diddy-ish parties the that are last diddy. That's the last thing on my, like, I know, because you're an old man now, you know. You got the kid to take care of. Me and my daughter mom. live a life, man. Like, <laughs> it's just me and her. Like, we, we live a life, Well, bro. who did that crazy That's round trip album cover? The art on that was My man Dom Dirty was right there, but also uh, Chris B. Murray. So, Dom, like, we did a, I got a shot of Photo Rob, too. He took the photos of me and my kid in front of the house. Because I really live, like, you know, on the cover, like, the cities in the background? Yeah. That's why I live. Like, my background is Manhattan. Oh, like, I live on the water in Brooklyn. So, we took the photos. Then Dom took, like, cartoons off the internet and put it in. And then Chris redrew, like, his own originals. So, like, that was a cool cover for me. Yeah, for um, art. <laughs> yeah. And it's cool that you, like... It, you know, it's like you're showing your real life as it is, yeah. and you're not afraid to do that. Like I feel Monday bad. Monday through Thursday, <laughs> I'm dad. I bring my, I put my kid on the bus in the morning, pick her up at school, do homework with her every day. Thursday through Monday, yeah, I'm psychopath rock star that is fucking on the radio and then in the club and then on a plane and then in this country and this country and then Monday, I'm, tomorrow, I land, pick up my daughter at school and I'm back to like playing Call of Duty while she sleeps and like, you know, Clock doing dead. homework and well, losing good, my well, mind. you have to be. You're, you're part of the good dad. Nah, but nobody, <laughs> nobody, and I mean nobody, like very, very few people, less than like five, less than three percent of the dads on the planet have the schedule I have with the one-on-one -on -one time I have with my kid. Like it's, I fought very hard to have that. And like, because most people got to work jobs and yeah. all that. Like I literally set my life up where I can be with my kid full time when I have her. And then when I'm not, I got to work. And Well, this is almost a page out of the Eminem book because he turned down whole tours with 50 Cent. I've been in the room when Eminem turned down $10 million show in like Australia. Like literally, like I've had someone be like, we got this and nah, I'm good. Like, M is super good dad gang. And, Shot uh, term for that. And, and, and I also, the, the like, one of the only things I'm listening to still is, I'm from Michigan, so the death of Slim Shady, that album is fucking immaculate. Did you hear the deluxe with the 2 chains joint? Yeah. I, I, that's a, yeah. It's I was sitting on that record for a minute. The deluxe is immaculate, annoyed. the standard is immaculate, the 2 chains joint is immaculate. Like, it's amazing. So, the, the remix they did of, uh, fuck. Now, now I'm blanking on the name of the track with, um, sorry. You know what's cool about what M does, man, is like M is just like nobody or even the people around don't know what the hell is coming next, and he just does what he does, and like he, he's a go, man. Yeah, he's amazing. 
Oh, you're amazing too. Them. You've lived a life sure. that uh, less than uh, 0.001% of people have ever gotten to live. So we really appreciate you taking the time, man. Appreciate you. I don't know if you want to tell everybody where they can find you. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone knows where they can Shade find you. Shade 45 every Thursday night. Uh, shit, hit my IG at Static Select. I have a podcast coming out soon. I hate that word, but it's called A Legend Has It. And we're only interviewing people that were like legends to me growing up. So like expect to see, you know, the, the usual suspects, but the, the the goats of producing. We're going to start with producers and probably end up, I don't think I want to talk to rappers, honestly. I think it's just going to be producers and DJs. That, that's actually one thing I wanted to ask you was, what's one album from the 90s that didn't get the shine it deserved, but now you're like, oh, underrated as fuck. Pete Rock and see how smooth made ingredient. Sure. Everybody but, that always, but that one... Everybody always talks about the first album. I, I like the made ingredient. I like the camera. Oh, that was so good. Thank you. All right. Well, that's what... Now that we got... Uh, we're, we're here at it. I mean, you said you work with Monster and now this is Rainstorm and Clean yeah, Energy. Monster I'm, owns it. Okay, so. owned by Monster and like I'm a, I'm an energy drink fanatic. That's why I'm gonna live. That's why I look so young. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to say to these guys, man? I want to say uh, hit the big Dookie chain, like and subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching and thank you for making that round trip and still fitting us in. And Tash, Marty forever. Sense lives. Fuck her, chilling. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh.